This is the LG C2. It's a 4K OLED display capable of delivering 120Hz and it's only 42 inches wide, meaning it can fit on most people's desks. In this video, I'm going to assess whether this TV could be the perfect monitor for both gaming and productivity. Hey pals, welcome back. As a full-time creative professional, I'm always looking for ways to optimize my workspace. And while this is usually done through lots of minor improvements, I'll occasionally make bigger changes. LG's OLED TVs have been a popular choice since they released the CX range back in 2020. However, with the smallest version being a hefty 48 inches across, it simply wasn't feasible for many to include it in their setup, unless they had a particularly deep desk, which meant that they could then sit far enough away to enjoy an optimal viewing distance. That changes with the C2 range, which now includes a 42 inch version. That's still much larger than the majority of consumer monitors, but it brings it just inside a comfortable field of view when seated a couple of feet away, making it a viable choice for those who want to enjoy the benefits of OLED technology at their desk. So before I tap into the viewing experience, let's talk about the TV itself. LG's OLED panels are self-emitting, which means that the pixels don't need to be backlit in the same way an LCD screen would. As a result, this TV is incredibly thin and measures less than a centimeter at its smallest point. It has a narrow bezel that is slightly thicker on the bottom section, and the I.O. is all located on the left-hand section of the screen. The design is slightly different to the rest of the C2 range, and the 42-inch version comes with a pair of dark grey plastic legs, which are easy enough to install. They're a bit cheap feeling, so part of me wishes that LG had also included the same stand that comes with the 48-inch and above versions, but I'm guessing this was a choice made to reduce the TV's footprint, and they get the job done. A set of mounting holes gives you the option to attach this TV to a wall bracket, and this would have been my preferred option, but since I'm using a standing desk, it didn't really make sense to have the TV fixed to a specific vertical placement. As you can see, when the TV is placed directly onto a desk, the viewing angle is a bit low. Ideally, you want the center of the screen to be about eye level, so I bought this monitor shelf from Oakywood to raise it by a few inches. This also gives me some extra room on the desk, helping to keep my workspace looking tidy. The remote that comes with the C2 is almost identical to last year's model, and still has the pointer function reminiscent of a Nintendo Wii console. It's a cool feature, and definitely makes typing within the OS a bit easier, However, the sensors required for this to work just look a bit clumsy at the bottom of the screen. This doesn't seem to be the case on the other versions of the C2 with the upgraded metal stand, so I can't help but feel that this is an annoying compromise, especially given that the 42 and 48 inch versions are priced exactly the same. So I was previously using LG's 32 inch Ergo monitor, which was a great quality panel with some clever features that made it a compelling choice for those looking for a productivity focused monitor. However, due to the lackluster brightness and color accuracy, I found myself increasingly using my 14-inch MacBook Pro to benefit from the excellent XDR display. Obviously, this wasn't an ideal solution, and tasks that lend themselves to a larger screen, such as producing video content and editing in Photoshop or Lightroom, often felt a bit claustrophobic. When I first connected the MacBook Pro to the LG C2, I had mixed feelings. I was immediately blown away by the image quality. OLED is wicked, and I think I'd have a hard time going back now. The contrast and colors are unlike anything I've experienced before, and even give the MacBook Pro a run for its money. However, there was a pretty noticeable input delay and it was affecting my mouse pointer accuracy, to the point where I actually had to take a short break because it was making me feel a bit queasy. Don't worry though, there is a solution for this. It took me scanning the comments of a couple of YouTube videos, but I found out that some devices aren't automatically recognized and you might need to edit the input type from the Home Dashboard app. It can be found on the OS homepage and on the input screen and you just need to make sure that the HDMI input is set to PC. This dramatically improves the overall responsiveness and with basic temperature adjustments and by turning off some of the power saving settings, I was able to match the colors to my MacBook screen, making this a seamless experience. Now you might be wondering at this point, why I didn't just look into upgrading to a monitor designed for creative work? Apple have just released the Studio Monitor, which would have paired nicely with my MacBook and there are a plethora of other options available that focus on excellent color gamut coverage. Well, when I'm not working, I like to game at my desk. I've never really been a fan of the console experience on a larger screen, so I've pretty much always gamed from my monitor. And let me tell you, using the PS5 on this TV is the best gaming experience I've ever had. Not only do you get to enjoy the incredibly rich colors and deep blacks that OLED panels provide, but this TV also has support for 120 frames per second gameplay, unlocking the full potential of next-gen consoles and finally making them feel like a significant upgrade from their predecessors. This is made possible by the inclusion of HDMI 2.1, which is the most recent HDMI specification and supports a range of higher video resolutions and refresh rates, including 8K60 and 4K120. More frames means smoother gameplay, and scenes with a high level of motion, such as those in dirt, look way better as a result. Now, you're obviously not going to be able to experience this through a YouTube video, 
but playing at a higher FPS feels amazing. And although there are only a small number of games that currently support this feature, that list is increasingly growing as TVs with HDMI 2.1 ports become more mainstream. Even though the MacBook Pro's XDR display has a variable refresh rate up to 120 frames per second, it uses a HDMI 2.0 port, meaning it can only output video up to 4K60. I have a feeling that Apple will eventually offer support for high frame rate output, either through Thunderbolt 4 or by using an external GPU. However, at this point, there's no way of achieving this as far as I know. Obviously, this is a shame, but I don't want to downplay the overall experience. Using a 42-inch monitor for creative work is amazing and gives me so much extra room for various windows and workspaces. When I'm using Final Cut Pro, for example, I can leave all my tools open and comfortably keep the entire timeline in view. There is one clear downside that I've noticed about this monitor. I'm not sure whether it's the coating or the white light technology that LG has implemented on their OLED displays, but the C2 has a very noticeable color shift at certain viewing angles. Because the C2 has such a wide field of view when using it as a monitor, the viewing angles at the corners are different than the center of the screen. If you're seated too close, there's a very noticeable blue vignette that can only really be remedied by sitting further away. This is obviously problematic for certain tasks such as color grading video or editing photos. While it's not bad enough to be a deal breaker for me personally, if you're thinking about buying this product for a similar purpose, I think it's an important point to consider. That being said, if you're only planning on using the C2 for general computing, I think it's a solid option. Just keep in mind that it doesn't have features commonly found on consumer monitors, such as window snapping or USB-C connectivity. It wouldn't be right for me to make this video without addressing the potential of burn-in, which has traditionally been the Achilles heel of OLED panels. After watching many videos on previous LG OLEDs, the general consensus is that it's not really an issue for typical TV usage. However, using this product as a monitor is a different story, and it's definitely an area I've tried to approach with some caution. I like to work in full screen windows, so I'm constantly moving the screen around, and I've also left the auto dimming feature left on for tasks with little movement, such as writing or editing. Hopefully this will be enough to mitigate any potential burning issues, however, only time will tell, so I'll try to post an update on this further down the line. So the question is, is the 42 inch LG C2 the perfect monitor? Not quite. Don't get me wrong, it's an amazing piece of tech and I'm really glad I bought it simply for the viewing experience alone. However, there are several compromises when compared to using a dedicated monitor. Whether they're enough to sway your decision is really down to your specific needs. The good thing about my complaints is that a lot of them are software based and theoretically can be fixed through future updates. I'm sure LG are aware many were looking at this product as a potential addition to their desk setups. And if they're serious about providing a smaller option for this purpose, I'm sure we can expect to see further improvements down the line. If you're willing to put up with a few annoyances, the C2 range is a continuation of LG's incredible OLED product line. And while it might not be the perfect monitor, it's certainly one of the best TVs you can buy right now. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other content both here on YouTube and over on Instagram where I post frequently about the tech I'm currently using. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.